Are y'all ready to jump this off? You know it. Are you ready to jump this off? Let's do Welcome it. Welcome back to another rendition. I ain't even gonna tell you what it's a rendition of yet. <laughs> because today is the day that we switch it. Yeah. Like, we started off doing black excellence. Right. right? Like, now it's the black market. Yeah. We done had enough black excellence that we've created a black market. Of black excellence. Exactly. You feel where this is going, right? I already right? know. Bro, we bring tiptoeing in the cryptocurrency and the tech world. And, you know, people who are tech savvy right. have been reaching out to us and trying to put us up on game. Yeah, that's a good game to be in, too. It's oh, the yeah. way of the future. So check this out. Guess who we got in here with us today? Who is Man, one of them tech-savvy-ass dudes, bro. OK. But he a hood dude, but he know how to code. I already know. You know what I'm like? He probably know a lot of little stuff, too, like how to watch porn and not get no viruses on the computer. <laughs> I don't know why you had to smut this man's name up off I'm the I'm just top, saying, those bro. are the things that they don't get credit for that you deserve credit for. You know, and you know what's so cold about this dude, bro? It's like, we don't work with this dude indirectly on multiple occasions. Right. That's the indirectly part. without even knowing it. Exactly. Man, without further ado, my man Cedric. What's up, man? Cedric. Thank you, you for that. coming and jumping in here with us. Go Google him. It's Cedric Rogers. Yeah. But we introduce people like real world introductions exactly. around here on the I Black Market, cut. man. Because this is going to be the last time you see him. You don't really get to talk to the boss like that. No, not <laughs> he really. don't even like being seen like yeah, that. No. Like Batman. Come on, he got camouflage pants on now. He's hiding from <laughs> something. <laughs> What's up, Seth? Welcome good, to the man. trap, bro. You know we're gonna talk some shit. Appreciate y'all having me here, man. This man. Appreciate you coming, here, bro. 85 South, be in the trap. Love it, love it. Man, tell the 85 percenters, man. Give them a quick little rundown of like how you got where you are and then brought it over here. Cool, cool. Well, like I say, man, um, originally from Houston, Texas, like H Town. H Town. Mo City to be exact. Come on. Roll out and bang. Yeah, Shout out man. to Zero yeah, all the way. Zero. You can't bring up Mo City and no, not bring, bring up, up King Kiron and Zero. Kiron? <laughs> yeah. For sure, for sure. Uh, like I said, man, I'm from Mo City. Um, went to North Carolina T undergrad. Okay. Man, and actually uh, major electrical engineer. HBCU. Uh, already, already. And so my my focus was always technology. Always was on them cats that used to take shit apart, put it back together. What you start with? Man, you know the first one was a vacuum cleaner for some damn reason. Man, I would go in. That's a that's I was figuring because that was like black people. You got to get in there when that belt break off. You got to get the butter knife. Vacuum you got to pop cleaner, the little wheels off. Toaster. Nah, I ain't fucking no toaster. That's yeah, that's 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 level ten shit. You know how I many uncles died Uncle, fucking with a yeah. toaster? But this one I really got vicious with was a Christmas lights and shit. I used to get. Oh all man. That shit, man. That's when I knew. Keep I it real. You from Old City? You ever stole some electric? Nope. Ah, right, exactly. Good answer. That's what I'm talking about. Look, cable. The cable. Oh, yeah. It was all your <laughs> Just you a little bit till you got back on your feet. Just a little bit you got back on your feet. You know how that go. But yeah, man, so that was always a thing. I, I early on in life, had a passion for technology. Even though I grew up in this, you know, you text, you playing football. I ran track, too, at A&T. Okay. So I was always, like, trying to do a little bit of everything, you know, while I was there. But, you know, that experience really prepared me to kind of go into the workforce. And so I just went to Apple. And so I started out at Apple really as a, what they call a system engineer. Yeah. Um, and really kind of learning that technology. Because I started off as electrical and doing a lot of hardware. Bro, how you get over there, bro? You don't and see a lot of brothers that. that work at Apple, man. Hey, real talk, man. When I was there, it was, you know, it's been a minute now, but I was one of the few black people in there. So at what stage did you get into Apple? Like, which iPhone was out when you got there? iPhone went out, bro. It wasn't even an iPhone. Oh, you was, it was in there early. You okay. Know, there with the, with the there. computers with the color background and that big ass after on that, it. After oh, that. After that. You was after that, but before the iPhone. IPod. Okay. It was the iPod. The iPod. iPod. The fat okay. ones? Yeah, the big, the big boy. Okay. So the big boy had just dropped. And I was in there. Them shit still work, man. Still work. Boy, that hard ass, hard drive. Yeah. Ass shaking in there. Denzel yeah. had one after the world ended on Book of Eli. <laughs> <laughs> he did. <laughs> what was he charging you that? Uh, same way he was charging them toasters back yeah, in the day, yeah. just electrical engineer. Well, 
But uh, yeah, so that's how I started at Apple, man, and it was a great experience. Um, it was cool because they let me stay here in the, in the A. So I was living in the A, and I would go back and forth between the West Coast and here. Um, and so I worked there for several years, and then I actually wound up uh, even getting my MBA at Emory. So I was able to kind of really get entrenched in Atlanta. And uh, during that time, that's when I was kind of enjoying what I was doing, but I really wanted to do something else, right? I always, always wanted to be an entrepreneur. And uh, that's when I met Paul Judge. So Paul Judge, if folks don't know here in Atlanta, big time serial entrepreneur, very successful, and he took me under the wing. And he was like, yo, man, you got the dreamer's dilemma. He said, either you're gonna you know, have the safety of building somebody else's, or you're gonna take the risk of doing your own thing. And so I was just like, I'm, not, I'm about that. So I started uh, with Paul. We actually created a, a startup called Look Live. Uh, we went through this kind of incubator thing called Y Combinator. So we had some success there, and I learned a lot from him. Um, and then that's when I bounced from that in 2018 to create uh, what is now Culture Genesis. And so Culture Genesis, what it was, is just a, or it is still today, a company that we would say we wanted to focus on the culture. We knew we wanted to take literally what we were seeing in tech, but apply it to us. Because mm. oftentimes we're not thought about, right? It's always the white folks or anybody else that's kind of winning. So that's how we started with my co-founder, Sean Newsom. Um, and we started, like I said, in 2018. And cool enough, I got to know Jason Jeter, Tip. Grand uh, Hustle. Yeah. Grand Hustle Boys, right? So from there, they saw what we were working on and they invested. So that was a big thing, too, I wanted to do was like have like the regular tech investors, but I wanted to have a culture, too. And, um, you know, with Tip, Jason, that was one of the things that they always wanted to focus on was like bringing that same energy. Uh, so Let I, me uh, ask you this. Where does the culture and tech meet? Where are they in the spectrum? Question. So if you really right take, now. if you take a step back, I'm going to give you an example from my Apple days and then right now. So if you really look at how the, the iPod really hit it hard, it was, about, it was based on music. But if you look at all the music they highlighted, it was always our music. And it was always showing silhouettes and showing people of color, right? And that's how, at the end of the day, culture leads in this country, but it also leads across the world. We actually, our culture, our specifically. Culture specifically, makes everything dope. And it's the way that really adoption takes place in tech. Because if you really look at tech dudes, man, shit, you know, we corny, geeky, you know, you're not gonna necessarily hit it. But if you had the right influencers, the right people that understand the technology and put it in front of the culture, it takes off. So that's how it was in the Apple, but I think today, to answer your question, it's like, look at what we do in social media. Look at what happens in, TikTok. Like, right now, there's a whole issue going on there that we're working on. We'll talk about that later. But we actually make everything dope in TikTok. If we stop, it stops. Nigga, we didn't actually make white people cool. Right. Net, net. You know how fucking hard? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, the truth. For real. That's like, the truth. To Bro, TikTok a nigga had his influence. shoes untied and made it a style. Right. Bro. And that's been a style. It's just now you just... A lot of the things, and that's the question I have for you, a lot of the culture that we produce is is been around for years, but now since you have the transfer of information is so fast, you know, you get stuff that look like it's new, but it's not. So right. how much of that do you take into account when you think about putting out the culture? Like, do you just deal with what's going on now, or do you go all the way back? Do you have the open doors for people from, you know, maybe somebody that was cool in the 80s to come in and say an that's idea that you can translate now? Yeah, I think that's, I think everything is a remix to you, to you. That's the greater point, right? It's a great book about this, where it's like, really nothing is new, right? It's really an idea that comes back with a little bit of twist and turn. Hell, the iPhone ain't nothing but an MP3 player and a, and a cell phone merged, right? So it's just a mix of it, the two things. And I feel like in today's time, what we're seeing is like, that's, it's, you're right, it, it's moving so fast. It's the cycle, it's, it's like instant sometimes. Um, I was talking to uh, Patrick, uh, these young brothers out of Atlanta. Um, they were doing these dad jokes and they've been really catching on, I, 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 you know, they're doing all that. But they actually took that from a white dude, which is funny as hell, right? So, but it, that, that innovation moved. But I think where we can see a great opportunity is like bringing in people like you all, creators, right? Because you all are seeing and understanding and tapping into culture and merging with tech people. That's what really has to happen so that we can own it. Because right, we're seeing it happen all around us, but we're not taking enough in the ownership. And so that's the big 
thing for me is like, how can we own more of this innovation? You hear a lot of people talk about ownership, but talk about some of the responsibilities of ownership and what comes with the response. Because everybody say own, 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 but nobody really talks about the responsibilities that comes with being an owner. Well, I think the first thing to your point in ownership and responsibility, right, is that you got to truly understand it. I feel like oftentimes people reach into it with a very limited understanding and not understanding the impacts of what they're doing, the creations that they're making, right? Um, and not crediting the true creators oftentimes that are really behind the innovations. And I think sometimes it happens accidentally and sometimes it may be maliciously, but because people are moving so fast, right? They're not taking the time to be like, oh, I need to credit so-and-so or at least get so-and-so involved in the project because shit, this is coming from some of their they're thinking from maybe 10 years ago or five years ago. And I think that's the biggest responsibility to the innovators, right? We have to really take the time to like understand where it's coming from and bring those people in on the process. Uh, but I feel like sometimes that gets clouded because people are, they on that chase, right? They're trying to get that fast money and oftentimes they don't do it. And I feel like that is sometimes the danger in technology, right? Because it just moves so fast. We got to figure out what we're going to do about the internet and all these social media platforms that are robbing black creators and influencers and just black people. Bad people all together. The culture. I mean, but this the crazy thing is it's been going on, but like you said, just to transfer but information, you just Now see is it. the time where like the money is at the height of where it's ever been. It's so easy for motherfuckers to know where this shit came from. Everybody knows where it came from, but it's like where the residuals. Somebody so, getting the residuals. To your point, to your point and your point is that the responsibility. I feel like culture genesis that what we've developed now, we've taken ownership of all deaf. We have access to so many creators. So the way we see it now is that we have a media platform. We also as far as a network for media, we have a network now for creators. And I do feel like our responsibility is to hop in there and represent the creators, not trying to take money in their pocket, but really going after. Up the check. Are, yeah, up the check, right? So how can I get all our creators who might be in some of our content, their own channels, their you know, influencer Well, that's the thing sure about it. The they have to. As white folks again. They got to up the check. They can't just wait on these moments to happen and then you 300 million views up and then they're like, okay, now we got to figure out a pay situation. Well, that's what's happening right now. Well, exactly. That's, that's what, what I mean. That's what's happening right now. Even with that being the case, how do you get us to stay with us? Because it's so easy with it. Like you said, you, you know, you have culture genesis, but if you bring in a group of young influencers for Culture Genesis and it starts to work and then some major conglomerate comes and say, hey, I got this. How do you keep that in pocket to say this is more lucrative for us in the long run? It's not, just so, sell it. They're I, gonna I get it anyway. They're gonna get it anyway. So here's how I look at it. So like there's actually some brothers here in Atlanta called a collab career, right? So they got all these young creators, like they're all like 19, 20 something years old, all, you know, from the culture, right? And the way I look at it is like, our responsibility is like to show them the game, right? partner with them and help them get the bag and then also making sure the corporations are paying them what they worth. See, that's I mean, the thing about the game though. It ain't no it ain't no standard in it. Yeah. You could be creating content and blow up on one small pocket of the internet and like you said, sign with some Russian tech company and you'd be rich before anybody in America even know, know what the are. fuck you right. doing. No, that's real Walmart to pick your shit up and make, you never know where these people are getting their sponsor. Like all these corporations reach out to who they like. Yeah. So there is no standard way to say, okay, you gotta watch these people. Like ain't nothing would, to watch. Walmart looked this, out this time. I would say this one thing that <laughs> is happening that, that's coming to our path as far as culture genesis, right? So like Facebook, um, which includes Instagram, uh, YouTube, and even TikTok just last week, have all come to a saying that they understand or they're starting to see it's a problem. So they, they start to look bad behind it, right? Because they like, starting to? In their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> they, it's been a problem for a minute, but now they're starting to understand how bad it looks to where you've taken down a black creator's content, but the same Asian or white creator's content stays up. You know, like, why is that? Well, why is it the black creator not getting the same, you know, deals that the white creators or the Asian creators are getting, or whoever it may be? It's just the same game, bro. That's that's just systematic racism. It's like you're gonna waste so many time, so much time asking the questions that you already know the answer to. 
So I you don't have to go and ask them people why. You know why. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, t- it's time to stop asking yeah. why. Yeah. I, the only answer is it's just equity. It's the same, to your point, it's the same conversation we have in, you know, anywhere else. So it's just like, yo, how do you give us our equity in the conversation? You so got to stop me, asking to be given shit. Yeah, just start taking it. Exactly. But, but you got to also have a structural, you know, balance that is able to deal with the ramifications that come when you say, you know what, fuck it, we're going to take it now. You know what I mean? A lot of the reason why I think we can't go that route is because we don't have enough structure amongst each other to be able well, to keep we it we don't have enough principle amongst yeah, exactly. each other. That's, nobody's, that's nobody's deleted their TikTok page. They're just going to sit there and wait on them to apologize and give them a new filter. Yeah. Well, I th- they already I th- told you they don't want you on their app. Just go on Instagram with your black friends and yeah, let them have that shit. Got a, we got a, a, a problem with it. Mass like we'll exodus. Out on something, you know what I mean? On I everything. Think, yeah. I, think y'all, I think y'all are doing it. So I look around who is trying to do it. Right? I look at 85. I look at like Kev on stage, what are you doing? Like y'all are building your own direct to consumer experience. Oh yeah, wait till I really get my infrastructure. It's titties in every episode. <laughs> Only reason I haven't because we using they shit. shit yep. When I get my own app, yep. titties. Yeah. Do it, <laughs> and do it it's a want. whole section. T-I-T-B, <laughs> titties in the building. And then you could go to Magic City and let- No, I'm not. Wow. I got my own titties. <laughs> <laughs> You need to learn about ownership. But no, real talk, I, I think... What, I'm just being what, the no, voice what, of unreason. You, no, you got to no, throw that actually, out there. No, it's, it's actually right, though. It's like, that's what I stand for, is about building. But it's unfortunately not as many of us still yet building the platforms for the creators to also tap in and, and have the ownership in. So that's what I was saying earlier. We got to really partner together, like you're saying, Chico, come together and build these direct-to-consumer experiences so we don't need to go Right. The lives. next app, the next social media platform we get on, it need to be black-owned, and we need to be able to be black on there. Let me ask you this question. How important do you think it is that because this, you know, a lot of this stuff that's necessary for the future, is not being taught in our schools anywhere in America. So, like, do you feel like it's necessary to start teaching these kids coding and, and how to operate these things so they can grow with it? And by the time they get to, you know, being adults and out here, they already have a, a keen understanding of the workings of it so they can really start putting their effort in, into making the things that we need for us. Yeah, it's funny you asked that question. So, like, you know, Usher has Usher's new look here in Atlanta. And while I was living here full time, I would go there and do a lot of just that, right? Helping the young people to understand. It's like, it's cool to play the games, but you need to understand how to like break the game, how to like re take it apart. Oh, they know how to break the game. They lose, they break the shit out of it. But (laughs) But I mean literally coding, right? Right. Learning how to code. My nephew sitting out here, literally, he was like my use case for this. Like I taught him really about coding because I was at Apple, showed him what it was, what it was all about. And literally he wound up getting very passionate about it wind up getting a scholarship to Georgia Tech, but he actually got a, a ride to MIT. So he went to MIT and major computer science. Oh, that's dope. He's smart enough not, yeah, he's he know what to pick. He's doing. So he can't, now he's back here in Atlanta working in the crypto space. So he's big in that, right? So I think it is about us teaching the young folks, right? We got, we do need to kick that knowledge back. And I think it's not gonna happen a lot though in the schools though, Chick. I feel like it's gonna happen a lot of times in these like community organizations. But I think that's important. Like it's important for us to use some of that revenue that we might receive and build to start to get guys like yourself and your nephew together to come in on a Saturday and just have the kids and teach them, you know what I mean? Like you said, how to break the game because a lot of the information, the information is being taught somewhere, but it's just not where we are. And I think that's necessary because a lot of these young kids are like, my daughter knows how to work the internet in ways that she's showing me how to do stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's just natural because you grow with it. So it, you, you, you hear have what a different he's saying? understanding. He's saying he want to set up a coding thing. You want to? Yeah, we, we got, got to. to. We got the black market. We got okay. to. We got to. Okay. Just to get y'all, the kids to come in. This is, a, this is easy. And there's a lot of people I know that want to partner with y'all on this, right? So Why you like, ain't tell you, us? We, we talking right now, bro. Bro, what advice would you give to, to the future black nerds who might be watching it? Those kids who, <laughs> who you know, they those ones that they don't understand yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I would tell them, like, you know, stay curious, right? Stay curious. And Steve Jobs used to say this thing all the time. He would say, when you look around a room, you got to realize everything in that room was made by no one smarter than you. This chair, this table. You got to kick it with Steve Jobs? 
I did. I was had... he musty? <laughs> Tell the truth. Bro. Tell the truth, bro. In love and memory. In love and memory. That's just, just going to put that out there. In love and memory. He, it, rest in peace, right? But he had got off that whole fruit diet and all that. Because I was on the second iteration of Steve. I mean, he was there, left, and then came back. So I was on Steve Part 2, 2.0. Steve so with the, with the with shirt the tucked in there. Yeah. So those are Isimiyaki, uh black turtlenecks. So he was, he was clear. He was clear. Can they hear us right now? Yes. Uh, yeah, we all got to <laughs> Yes. Real tough. Now, I know <laughs> you <laughs> might not want to get into that too tough, but, like, is do you think that privacy is 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 over with is there such thing as privacy now so i'm gonna say this publicly my knowledge don't say the wrong shit no i'm gonna say the right shit i'm gonna say say what i know i can say publicly i know that apple really did put a lot of emphasis on protecting the data here's why you always got to look at how a man makes their money now if you ask me how google makes their money how do they make their money it's advertising and selling eyeballs so it's not answers (laughs) <laughs> and then you asked me about Apple. I was <laughs> gonna be a trouble. Apple. I thought Google was getting money off answers, yes. my nigga. I no, thought it was bro. all correct answers. No, <laughs> bro. All about data. Now, Nasa, ask me how Apple makes their money. Apple makes their money off of selling you hardware, the phone, the Mac. So they don't need to sell your your data, your eyeballs, because they don't need. The, it's it's not a part of their core business. Core business is that got the Apple store that's got all that hardware in it, and that's how they killing the game. Now they have their own software to complement the hardware, but it's not the core business. Facebook, Google, they're selling you to someone else. So when you ask me about protection, there's some companies that are focused on open and having your data flying all over the place, and there's some companies that are not. So as we sit back and think about that, you can kind of make that comparable. Anywhere you go, it's like, are they selling my data? Or are they selling me? Or are they selling me a product? How can I manipulate the data, data that they sell? I want to is looking at the phone and they like, look, that nigga ain't brush his teeth this morning. <laughs> like that type of privacy. I ain't, I'm just I want to know well, how I can manipulate data, the data to work in my are favor. You in your house? What, what, what degrees you have your house set to? Does the, he need new toothpaste? Because it's like, that's all data. Wow. I need to manipulate that shit. I, Cause I want it to be able to bring me the sh- exact shit that I want. <laughs> like if it's gonna they be do done anyway. Amazon, but I'm saying. Amazon does that right now, right? With the push button, bring you the product. Like all these companies are getting access to your data and using it to sell ideas. This the shit we should have been talking about yeah, right here. It's even, it's even <laughs> you know weird some shit, you bro. Know, you, you are, it's to the point now where you feel like you can think about something and then you open your phone and up. it pops up. So it's like. Why do you think that is? I'm asking you, man. You know how to <laughs> break the game. Bro. I mean, I mean, real talk. I mean, like I said, these phones all have a live mic in them for the most part. So that live mic is picking up conversation. And that conversation can be parsed and taken to say, like, oh, okay, he's talking about this. And then next time you do your Google search, that shit pops up. Like, why is that? Or you open up Instagram and this shit is in your feed. Like, why is that? Like, Damn, you gotta get on that side. You know what I yell at my phone yeah. every day, so. So I mean, it's. I, I feel like <laughs> I feel like they also do it through our content, which is back to core to what we do, right? So now that we're creating content, we're engaging these. Y'all, y'all got the 85, 85 percenters, right? Right. Y'all got them all jumping on shit that y'all talking about, but like brands is trying to listen to what they like. Who's the core demographic, you know, that's coming to all y'all shows, come listen to the podcast? Nigga. You, re- you speaking uh, straight facts. That was a joke. Right? I ain't even going to tell you who reached too. out to me. Now, they know. And I was just talking about them, and they was like, we want you. Yeah, they know. Who? I tell you. To all here. Right. To here. What's on here? Talk Wait, about talking sausage. about eating Quick Trip oh, hot dogs. Yeah. Quick Trip popped up. Oh, yeah, I, that'd be crazy. Now, that didn't happen to us a lot. We got to do one episode where we just name brands. Brands, over and over again. Again. We could over do it today. <laughs> I'm talking about just name all our favorite shit. Right. <laughs> Cookie Chris, everything. Ooh. Shoe strings, nigga, oh. every, all types of shit. Boy, just when, whatever. And just hope, we just hope one catch. That's what it is. That's a smart idea right there. Bro, bro I'm right. talking about just about two hours of just, just name brand, brand whoring. Bring the Jerry curl back. Right. <laughs> hey, I think it's real. I think 
You know, any day, like I say, I, I know. Bro, you took too long to get over here. You should have been came over hey, here and put bro. us up on game. I'm happy to be I really here. feel like it's your fault. <laughs> They go to Apple people. Man, yeah, this right is fucking. Right. Shouldn't have said this shit, man. <laughs> hey, but real talk, I, I ain't gonna say, but but so much, right? I mean, at the end of the day, it's like I think when y'all just related to just data, just think about that shit for a minute. It's all data. It is, now, man. You got the all depth digital. Like, what made you? Did you did you have a passion for comedy, or did you just see a business opportunity to to merge with what it is that you're That's good a good at? Question. I have a passion for the culture. Okay. And all depth and how it was created was all about the culture, right? It, it stems back from Def Comedy Jam, as we know, starting there. And you look at what that show represented for us at that time, some of the dopest comedians getting their first looks. Uh, and just like, but it wasn't like a regular comedy show, like people engaged all over the place. It's like representing who we are. Um, so for me, when the opportunity came up, I looked at it as, you know, 2013, Russell Simmons created who he was and has always been for the cultures. I was like, oh, this is exactly what we want because it wasn't just about comedy, which was the core piece of it all, but it was about music. It's about poetry. It's about gaming, cannabis. Like we were like, how can we take the culture and, and put our twist on all of those categories? So when I saw that and I went to uh, went back to Tip and, and JG, they were like, oh yeah, this is a win. So that's what made us quickly pull the trigger. And, and real talk, they selected us. Because after we had the whole conversation and had been working with them on projects prior to them going out of business, they said, like, we will, like, catch, like, y'all to kind of take this and further the legacy because we feel like y'all will understand it and respect it and cultivate it and drive it further. Um, and so, you know, I give us that credit for understanding, but, but more than that, though, it was all the creators that have always represented all deaf and, more importantly, the core unit, y'all know them as a lot of the squad. But um, man, like we I brought I made sure to bring a couple of them today, right? So Who you got? I brought Meg Scoop Thomas. So hey, Meg, what's up, Scoop and Meg? Here. Come on. Come on, y'all gotta get Scoop. over here, man. Scoop, come on, Meg. Come on, Scoop. Scoop. So School, you your toes done. I wasn't ready. Your toes Who else you got? And Walt, of course, Patrick Cloud. Oh man, this guy. Here's Pat Nash in the game. Pat, man, you remember that Budweiser commercial when dude had the dog on his head? <laughs> <laughs> I welcome. That's how we welcome him. That's how we welcome him. Oh. Meg Scoop, welcome to the trap. Thank yeah. you for having me. I love you guys. I you appreciate do? you. Yes. I didn't know. Yeah. Nobody, you don't tell us shit. I mean, yeah. listen, listen. Before I get, before I get, let them rip. So Meg, uh, you know Pat, but and also even Kev on stage. I don't want to miss that. Like, bro, they came through here. We laughed. Rifty. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Rifty. Oh, man, shout out, that shout that out to the whole stage crew. All the way. Yeah, man. Tony the Baker. <laughs> That's what I, never knew. I never knew. <laughs> Look at who you came to <laughs> see. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so when we took ownership, it was like November of 2019, right? right. Um, and real talk, I had already been able to work with Kev and, and, and uh, Meg for sure to hear because of the other project we had going. So I like, whoa, we're taking over. Like, let's let's build this thing back up. And they hopped in feet first, right? right. You know, head first too. Shout out to Doughboy, man. Doughboy Dough and Dough Teddy Ray Teddy been Ray down Ray. since day oh, one. Man, day one. <laughs> Hell and, um, yeah. So what what? Meg, you know, a lot of people don't realize they y'all see them often as the talent, but they don't see the what goes on behind the scenes. And so Meg, yeah, because like, they're behind the scenes. She behind the scenes. It makes sense. It makes sense. If they wanted yeah, us to stuff. see it, they would release the behind. <laughs> so with Meg, head of production, like she's she's the model running everything around there, and then of course, basically a partner in crime is. Uh, Pat, who was like all of them. I know, he was he was shooting the, the sketches and shit when I was out there. We was in that. Remember we was out there early on that? Yeah. Is that when we was in Cobra City or? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. <laughs> out there in the street with yeah. Doughboy yeah. and Teddy Ray. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, in the I'm office the all day. Ray. In the office, <laughs> so, so how much, yeah. how much as, as the, you know, the I would say you the, the business side of it, how much do you involve yourself in the content side or do you just trust them to do what they do and you just, you know, is it That's like a, a situation question. where That's me. me the price? That's me how he really is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now he'd be like, I'll let y'all do it, but what y'all doing? Okay. <laughs> and then, or, you know, but he's really good. He's pretty good. I mean, he because he understands this is what we do. We've been doing it for all day for a while. 
So it's like, okay, I trust y'all's vision, but he still is like, he's very hands-on. So he's like, okay, so I still want to know what's going on. He has really good ideas. Um, he comes from the tech world. So it's like combining You ever seen good. him fix some shit? I never Fires. heard about the toaster. I was stuff going on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now you gonna have all this knowledge and not fucking use it. Yeah. Fix this. Oh, but, yeah. yeah. But no, nah, because we got this hard drive that's been crashed oh, for about shit. a couple years. You <laughs> think? Five, you yeah. think we can get your nephew Real on time. that bitch, man? <laughs> Because we are, we got some people who put us on the hit list because some shows <laughs> didn't come out because the hard drive got fucked up. Yeah, <laughs> so plug me in to some people. Okay, we got you. Might know what we could do. All right, baby. And Pat, what would you say on the, uh, just the creative process, what you've been able to do lately? Um, I think it's really just about, like, making new formats, and especially now that we're out here in Atlanta and we get to, like, work with so much new talent, but also, you like, new You got tired of that L.A. shit. You was like, well, fuck it. We going to Atlanta <laughs> right. where black people are free. Right, right. Well, first of all, $3,000 will get you more I'm than a closet. You in Atlanta. be paying $3,000 a month to live in the trunk. <laughs> you like, bro, right, right, you don't right. have a job in here. Two houses in Atlanta. Fuck with me now. <laughs> exactly. We're just talking about moving, like, moving out here, because I love it out here. It's yeah. dope. Like, yeah. And it is way less expensive, like L.A. is. And it's, it's like, people are like actually nice out here. Like everybody sucks in L.A. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Everybody's just like super mean and fake. But um, <laughs> aside from all that, just like talent wise, like we're just really excited to be working with like a lot of new people and we're gonna be out here like expanding shows like Roast Me and, and just- Bro, like, well, you can use the trap whenever you need to. Hey, that's, that means a lot. We're looking at it, like, <laughs> we like this place. Yeah. We've been like right behind nice you guys. All the dogs, I think, you yes. know what I mean? You actually, yeah, it's dope in here. Dope. Yeah, this is very famous couch. Like, we've been kind of, like, looking at y'all for, like, six, seven years, just, like... Because I, I feel like 85 South, you guys do things well, but it's also cool, and it's you usually yeah. don't get one without the other. It's usually cool, but not well done, or well done, but not that cool. So, you know, there was a lot of, like, um, besides you guys, a lot of formats and a lot of businesses that we got to, like, look at and see how things worked, so... Yeah, thank you guys for even having us. This is the yeah, best time. Appreciate that. I'm fine, man. For sure. Hey, this is what it's about. You, <laughs> you got your hoodie? No, my booty. You rubbed oh, it on my face. I thought you said you got your hoodie. <laughs> well, that means that, that one worked too. That was cool. You got a booty, <laughs> booty and a hoodie. How about that? There you go. <laughs> Even with a hoodie. Okay. Thank yeah, you. we're gonna make sure we get you straight. But man, yeah, Atlanta. It's a different energy here as far as just creating. Like you said, it's new looks, new feel, new talent. Man, take full advantage of it. You know, it's a lot of people out here who are definitely open to working and building and creating. And you know, we love it. Being Especially part the of the takeover. Of it. The yeah. Like roasting is just He's a southern. southern. Oh southern man, you, the funniest yeah. motherfucker you ever find ain't gonna have shit to do with comedy. It's right. right, just some dude they walking down the street. street. Fuck everybody, <laughs> stupid ass <laughs> shirt. We love it. We love it. Well, we're trying to do combines out here. It's not like really out there yet, but we really want to go to different cities. And uh, you know, shout out to Ronnie Jordan. He suggested the idea of like the combine, like being, a roast combine. Yeah, yeah, but just like finding people in different cities that, like you said, they don't have to be comedians or. You know, it's just like a new way to kind of like get new people in without like filtering them through comedy or acting. Or Have y'all started the screening process? Not yet. Oh, Not what, yet. like somebody drop an email or something, yeah. this 85% is gonna send their clips in, bro. Oh, absolutely. We we'll happens, send your we'll wheelchair man, man, bro. Whoa, oh, wheelchair yeah. man. He will let everybody roast. know, yes. He yeah, every time my every hair, day. every time I get a new hairstyle, he's chico. <laughs> like, here it come. Here it come, but it's just like those people, like that's what this, I would say this city creates, like it creates yeah. an environment where it doesn't have to look like Hollywood. When it's in Hollywood, it has to look a certain sure. way, it has to be polished and, you know, right. professional. Right. You know what I mean? And here it could be whatever it is. Right. And that's where the culture comes in, exactly. bro, because exactly. we long make that real. shit look exactly. good. Yeah, yep. exactly right. That's I think I think that's the biggest thing, like just being authentic, right? That's what it means, genuine and authentic to the culture. And like right, right, not, right. not being unapologetic about that. And I think sometimes like getting out of even certain areas like LA and coming to a city like like Atlanta, you can just it's a good time to regroup, by. man. Especially yeah. with you know the world slowly walking itself yeah. back, man. So yeah, hit everywhere you can go. It's, man, oh, we yeah. be all over the place. I just was in what OKC. Yeah. More black people out there than I ever imagined. Yeah. It was for the Juneteenth. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. They literally took over. It'd be surprising, yeah. like when we go to. The, I was just in Columbus, Ohio, and it's just be like, man, we must got a direct connect to all the black people. But the white people that come, it's like, wow. 
Like, I didn't know we reached this far. Bruh. Like, no, y'all last man. black show, you look like you watched this dude. Who knows? You know what I mean? But I'm you here. Yeah. Motherfuckers look like they came straight out the mountains. Like, where are you watching me? <laughs> right. <laughs> Hell, I watch right. everything you put up yeah. there. <laughs> no, oh, that's pretty. Yeah, and I always ask, like, you, do you know who I am, or did y'all just want to do something dangerous? Like, you know what I mean? And they like, no, we love you. You guys are the greatest. I came to see you. Y'all you know got the man? same white guy accent. Yeah. Yeah. They be the same one. That's the who they are. I come up here two times and come see Chico. And, uh, DC's up here. <laughs> now I seen you. That white? Yes. yes. That yes. is kind of white. Yes. All the way. But that's, that's the beauty of technology, though, y'all. Right. Because at one point, we wouldn't have had that reach yeah. into the houses where they could break down those barriers to see, like, no, I like this shit. But see, I think a lot of it don't even come from the household. You got a lot of people that watch, like, you that part of it. But they watching us on their phone, so you know you might work with that dude. And he might, man, what's that you always watching over there on your break? And you know what I mean? That is getting introduced in that capacity. So now it just spreads. That's I think crazy. That way. Just knowing that somewhere we the only black shit in the whole house. <laughs> Like, they don't watch nothing else. Nothing else. <laughs> Not wilding out nothing. 85 cents. Exactly. Crazy. They probably learned a lot from it, too. And I'm talking right. about everybody in the house quiet, listening, paying attention. Dog, everybody. We didn't got videos. My dog loves you. They don't give a fuck. <laughs> what? They don't give a shit about the content. It's the pace of the Literally. conversation. That 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 no, that's not a joke. <laughs> like, no, no. How many videos have you got of people sitting their dog in front of the Man, TV? the fucking cat, like, be sideways watching this <laughs> shit like this. <laughs> Y'all, y'all real talk, y'all ain't getting them videos to Tony. Let them come back with a voice. Oh, we'll start saving. Hey, man, when you send them now, make sure you send it where we can save them. Bro, we get, it's this one lady had a house full of cats, like 11 cats, and they was all like. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I don't right, know what for it real, is, but animals great. fuck with us hard. <laughs> new sad. animals and newborns. Wow. But not for like. The owners of the animals, they just turn the TV off and walk. I don't even, I'm, just, I'm they, figuring They shoot that. the video. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's their job, I guess. But <laughs> we get some That's strange cool. shit, man. That's a whole show in itself. Yeah, that yeah. Is a just show. 85% of fan mail. Somebody made us this. It's a whole too. rolling tray that holds the lighter. It got oh. squats with a blunt. Oh, my God. Bro, yes. I didn't so know that was a problem. Look around in the right. paintings and all the stuff that people create and send. And, man, and I mean, we done had all sites of stuff. And that's the beauty of, of this. And that's the beauty of what you guys are doing, too. You create a, a, a element of, of just peace of mind for people that they don't usually yeah. get from places that they go for their entertainment, you know what I mean? Because they're not seeing anybody that looks like them or right. that they identify with. Right. But with us, we can create content where people say, I understand that because I went through that. Yeah. And I, I did the same thing. And, and that is, you know, something that we got to take advantage of. We try to take advantage of as much as we can over here. Right. Yeah, Y'all yeah. doing a great job, bro. You are, I mean, yeah. like, real talk, yeah. like, so, I don't even... I like giving people their flowers while you got a chance to see them, but man, I smoke my flowers. <laughs> I, I, I tell people that getting the flowers is cool. Like, nah. Flowers while you can smell them. Now yeah. I want my money while man, I can smell them. Yeah. <laughs> that's real too. Yeah, but now y'all, y'all are killing. Y'all leading the way in a lot of ways. Y'all are innovating. Seriously. Well, man. let's take it to another level. All the way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, y'all came yeah. here for a reason. You know what I'm saying? We both have these platforms. We're both for creating sure. this content. Clearly, there's a working relationship. Let's just elevate everybody's shit, yeah, man. Let's make it happen. Yeah. And make it look, look good. It. Yeah. All the way. And it'll yeah. be an 85 all deaf summer. Yes. Yeah. Hey, I we like just, that. We were just stuck in LA watching y'all from across the world. Like, all get these busy. People, like Miami <laughs> and New York, so it's really dope that we out here. So. Yeah, yeah, well, let's yeah, put something out. together, man. Yeah, it's it's something we can work on while y'all here. That's what it is. Don't let this be the last time y'all stop no, to no, drop no. some links, emails, whatever it is that y'all need to get out here to find these people that y'all are looking for for the up and coming. Yeah, yeah we're, we're definitely doing that. So, what's your, where can they find everybody? I'll give y'all a sample. Oh, I'm Patrick Cloud at pretty much everything. What's on you? What's your TikTok? I ain't giving out my TikTok. Yes, you are. You be <laughs> <laughs> on there, man. I just be on that bitch lurking. I ain't supposed to shit. Just... That's creative as fuck. Let me send this to Chico. <laughs> yeah, I don't have TikTok. That shit won't open. Yeah, but yes, it will. Yeah. Click that bitch. That's why I get all my TikTok. Him and my daughter, I can't get on TikTok. My brother, the most anti 
social media person you'll ever meet, he be on that bitch just sending me shit all the time. Like, really? Niggas one you actually like, but he don't even have a profile picture. He just likes shit. That's how my mom is. <laughs> I'm on there. I'm just on there watching. Hey, I don't know how to work this shit. I don't even want to give a fuck to figure it out. So whatever. I feel like a lot of people do that though. Like just work. And they use those to talk yeah. shit also. So yeah. I, ain't, I don't <laughs> like be fucking with nobody. I ain't said. I was on there. I stopped because I tried to do a dance. And I look stupid, and I was like, I'm done can, with this. I can see that. I really just yeah. watch most of the shit that they use my voice on. It's yeah, <laughs> voiceovers. Yeah. yeah. No, that's dope. That's, that's crazy. Like that's the part of it that when you're not on social media, you know how many times we done went viral, mm. and I'm talking about mm. like my daughter come like look there. I'm like, what? how did that get on there? Clips and memes and all everything. Yeah. Like yeah. it's crazy. Like just. How fast, like I said, the transfer of information. Like you do mm -hmm. something and it it made its way around the world three Hell times. Hell yeah, you, you get the clicking them threads. It's always an 85 South That's show true. laughing. A uh, little clip in there. And That's the thing, y'all had that with all that too yeah. for a long time. Like them roast me and. You know what I mean? Like, uh, what's my man name? Them shits is historic uh, at this point. You know point. that Teddy Ray uh, double cheeked up? Book of Pong. Craig, double cheeked uh, up. <laughs> Craig, what is my man name? Craig, Craig Smith, man. man. I love that dude, man. That nigga <laughs> told the nigga that your mama shot a nigga during the L.A. ride. <laughs> Bruh. He told that Asian buddy, he said, well, your mama shot a nigga during the L.A. ride. But after that, I was like, oh, I am a fan of that nigga <laughs> right there. Beast. You know what I mean? Book of Pong. Book of Pong. Book of Pong. Oh, yeah, Booker Bone, yeah, exactly, you know what I mean? CP and all these dudes that we, you know, we've Obviously. been working with these guys. Mm -hmm. You know, I've never personally met Craig, but Booker Pone, I met mm -hmm. CP, we've known for years, so yeah. it's just, we all consume each other's content right. and, and because, you know, we fans of each other. So yeah. it's like now that y'all back in the game and back doing it, it's like, it makes sense to just merge it all and, and, and get some good shit that's gonna last longer than we gonna last. So, Hell yeah. you know what I mean? Hey man, if you ever tried to trim your balls by yourself, you probably have cut your ball sack. Not with this one though. It's time to bundle up with Manscaped Performance Pack 4.0. Their fourth generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. The Weed Whacker is their nose and ear hair trimmer. Make sure you use the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant to keep you on your game in the heat. Then after trimming the lawn and whacking the weeds in the heat, use the Crop Reviver. Manscaped even threw in two free gifts with their Performance Package 4.0 the Manscaped boxes, and the shared travel bag. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code BLACKMARKET at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code BLACKMARKET at manscaped.com. Escape the shrubs and weeds this summer and shine with Manscaped. Oh, my bad. Okay, hey, yes, yes. At Meg Scoop, hit me up all over. I have a mommy podcast too. Mommy needs a break. You got some kids? Sure? I do have a son. Two and a half year old. Oh, Anybody want to Mommy needs a break. I want to talk to him. I'm trying to get him away. <laughs> trying to get him away. I'm going to get him back, though. Um, yes, Mommy needs a break at MNAB Podcast everywhere. And then me at Meg Scoop and also at All Deaf. Yeah. Okay. There it is. And, and shout out to Meg. She launched, we launched All Deaf Women. All Deaf Women. And so Meg is leading that with Cynthia Luciette, which y'all may know Cynthia. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So we know Cynthia, of course, you know what I mean? But see, that's, that's the All Deaf Women. You might have a, a group of deaf women that might feel like you're not identifying. You got to put right. some on there. They, they, they might not hear about it, but... <laughs> Do when get some deaf women. Deaf women you gotta have okay. somebody signing on there. At you all. That's actually that's a good idea. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it's all deaf women. So they got this deaf girl that's a stripper you know out here too. Work, man. Oh wow. wow. Oh, for real? Wow. Say what? Wow. They got the deaf girl that's a stripper. See, that'll be dope. You know what I mean? That's the music. I was just about to say. You I have to ask her. Right. Uh, I'm I'm that is yeah. That's yeah. All yeah. That's they tell me. They tell me. But, but okay. <laughs> with that in mind, though, poor minds from y'all camp, right? Yeah. 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 They, 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 yeah. Do something we with fuck with them. Yeah. 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 Shout out to poor minds. Poor minds. And then uh, my my shit is uh, Cedric Cedric J Rogers. Simple on everything: Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that. So we gonna post. We'll put it in there. All the way. We still rolling. Anything else? What's the What's the next joint coming out? Well, we've been here in Atlanta uh, shooting Roast Me Battleground, so I don't know if y'all seen that. So y'all used to regularly seeing us in the, the classroom. classroom right. yeah. Battlegrounds is a one-on-one, -on -one, head to head. And so we still got- Oh, I've seen that too. That's when, is that the one where y'all had my man Judge uh, 
uh, or was that the one where y'all would call different people in? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was yeah. like three yeah. on three one. On one yeah. person yeah. Yeah. had to just yeah. survive. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, all the way. It's that's it's Rough. a different it's a different game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a different game. You ready? Yeah. Brutal. Well, there you have it, folks. Black market. Yeah. <laughs> what else can you say? Appreciate y'all having us here, man.